Now, our next guest is a multi-talented actor, singer, and songwriter. You might remember, I'm going to cast your memory back to a couple of years ago. We, uh, we were first introduced to him as Sean Jacobs. Remember that? And on backstage, he then continued to embody other characters, including Bradley in Generations and Tino Martins in Scandal. And now, the seven-time SAFTA-nominated and winning actor has released a new single titled Promise, which is a dedication to his wife. Joining us in studio this Friday morning is the one and only. <laughs> I think Good you've morning. gotten to a point where you, you deserve that kind of intro. Oh, well, hey, yeah, I'm scared of those intros. How are you, Ayanda? You I'm good? very well, thank you. I usually ask this question first, so you're mm. clearly used to this Let me reciprocate thing. from the bat, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming through. Really appreciate your time here, especially because I think there is... There are so many layers to who Clint Brink is, and um, as I mentioned before we went to the break, that it all started in PAL, and it's amazing the journey that has been until this point. And as I say that, I'm reminded of you at some stage saying that you're a product of many prayers, hopes, and aspirations yes. from where you come from. Yes. How much of that do you carry with you, or have you carried with you throughout the years? Um, you know, it, it, it surprises me whenever things go really well in an environment where so many things are unpredictable. I mean, even just the way that we apply ourselves to our work, you know, the creativity and the creative space, art is subjective. Yeah. So one guy might think you're great, other guys might think, you know, you are mediocre. It's all open to personal interpretation. So therefore, knowing that, when you dedicate yourself to something that you have to constantly let go of in fear of when you hold on to it too tight you know it might damage you and you don't want the beauty of what it is you're doing to be damaged the, that internal process is something completely different you know and to have favor in 23 years and still be able to progress and learn and grow and contribute and be a student and, and be some form of a mentor yeah, that's definitely God's hand over my life, you know, yeah. because I can't take all of the credit. <laughs> I'm not that great. <laughs> <laughs> great, but maybe... <laughs> no, that's absolutely inspirational. And, you know, I, I'm wondering about, you know, what has managed to kind of keep your head on your shoulders, your feet on the ground throughout these years. Because, I mean, let's face it, there's been all kinds of attention, right? All the way back to your backstage days, yeah. onto Generations and Scandal. Um, people draw different things from you, and in many instances, um, those who view you in certain ways might come with certain um, temptations, certain deals, etc., etc. But yeah. somehow you've managed to stay the cause for the 23 years you've spoken about. And what do you put that down to? Well, um I will definitely also attribute it uh, to, to the investment many people have made in, in my life, you know. Yeah. Uh, teachers who always had a good thing to say about me, who would pray for me. Um, a praying family, my mother and my father. People who instilled good values in the home. Um, and then also allowing me the space to really discover who I am intrinsically and then apply that to my own walk you know, towards success or whatever you want to call it. So um, I believe it's important to know what your price is before you go into anything, hmm. you know. I think everyone needs to know what their price is. You need to know what your strengths and your weaknesses are, and therefore you also need to know what will be able to tempt you. You know, are you someone who is suppressing severe egoism? Because what happens is if you're dealing with something that has to do with the senses like we do all the time and having to emote and feel all the time, it's easy to get swayed by feeling as well if you haven't learned how to put principle into perspective into your life as well. So therefore, I feel I've really just been fortunate to not believe in the self-God too much, to just believe my own hype, to believe that I'm great at everything that I'm doing. Um, I really just want to remain someone who is hungry to um, exceed who I, uh, supersede who I used to be yesterday. Right, right. So yeah, I learn from people. Um, I understand I'm also just a cog in the wheel, you know. I'm not the main, main source of everything. And uh, I think those things kind of like just keep me grounded. Right. And also, I would say going to the gym. Manual labor is a really big thing. You know, all of us would drive past people in the road, swing pickaxes, you know, working really hard. Manual labor is a humbling, humbling thing. So therefore, 
the gym also gives me an opportunity to 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 focus on that you know there was all, there's always work to be done there's always weaknesses to improve on and uh, I take that in, in I, I, I try and see that with my career, my character, and also my physicality. I was about to say, uh, something tells me this is your approach when it comes to acting as well. You know, yeah. this constant um, position of being a student as you approach a new character. And earlier on, you spoke about the art of letting go, which, which has fascinated me because many other successful people um, speak of the need to hope for what you want and knowing when to let go and allowing it to happen. And I wonder um, to what extent that's featured in your own life. Yeah, for an actor, uh, remember, you have to go to many auditions. You're going to knock on a lot of doors. Yeah. And um, you're going to get a lot of no's. So how do you, if, if, if your art, if, if you feel like your contribution and your personal investment is also, at the end of the day, a reflection of who you are and is definitive of who you are because your heart and your soul is invested in what you're doing, right? When you get lots of negative feedback, it's easy to start believing that that is who you are. You're not good enough, or whatever, right? But the truth of the matter is, you and I, today, right now, at this very moment, all we have control over is this moment. How we respond to it, and how we react into the space. And whatever we say and whatever we do from here on out will have significant ripple effects, whether we want to believe it or not. So therefore, all we can actually do is just to be truthful in the moment mm. and then trust in that moment that what you are doing whether you're your greatest or whether you're you know at your worst possibly that that will still serve a purpose for the greater good for everyone and for yourself so when you go into auditions and you constantly get a no you have to exercise and just say but there is an appointed time for appointed things you know and and keep on exercising that faith and that belief so therefore there's a blessing in the lesson as well, you know, where you have an opportunity to constantly exercise your faith and belief that whatever it is, the truth that you are standing in is valuable enough to have its own day and own moment at an appointed time. Sure, not the spiritual awakening on a Friday morning, but I hear you. And, you know, I wonder, though, how easy that is, especially in the industry that you're in, where, um, let's face it, it's in many instances about aesthetic it's yeah. about uh, performativity, even yes. outside of the performance itself. You yes. know? We have people who will sit in your chair and will embody a character, yes. quite frankly, even though we're speaking about their work. Yeah. Um, so in many ways, it feels to me like you've had to swim against the tide, and that must have come with its own tides and tribulations. Oh, 100%, yeah, for sure. But I think, um, I think on, a, on a journey like this, where there's a lot of inventory self stock take that you have to do constantly in the beginning of the day during what it is you are doing during your performance and your creative process and also at the end of the day to kind of like find homeostasis so to speak you know I feel um, sorry just like give me that last bit again I just you know yeah, yeah, I've got to hit it myself <laughs> <laughs> it was the same oh, so, about so swimming swimming against the time, time, right? yes. in an industry where being genuine and authentic yeah. is not always what's celebrated. So what I, wanted to, what I wanted to say is that everyone has their in. Everyone has their own unique individual starting point, you know. Sometimes we start off looking like this and end up looking like something completely different when the journey is done with us. And uh, once again, if you do have blind spots within yourself, within your character, those things at the end of the day will start being exposed to the process because I believe what it is that we do is not is not in, 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 in wanting to strengthen the ego but actually to start diminishing it, you know, peeling away layers of self because that's what it what it means to me to, to embody a character is that mm. you shouldn't see Clint Brink the brand. You should see the character, the character suffering, the character circumstances and that means that I was able to fully uh, let go of who I think I am and serve the character. Now that also has a profound ability to really extend us as human beings, you know. I can't go back being who I was yesterday with new wisdom that I found today. Right. So I feel like people who um, strengthen and enforce the ego side of them are being deceived that that is not truly the gift of what the craft and the process can give to you. But eventually, if they want to, they will learn. Right, sure. 
Um, speaking about exposure, um, you've been quite open about your journey as a husband and, and recently as a dad, um, even against, uh, I imagine, the advice of some people. <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm sure there's a, there's a decision. And I, I mean, there's a reason for that decision. And I, I'll let you speak to that. You know, why was it important, do you reckon, for you um, to open up about what fatherhood looks like for a person like you? Yeah. Well, um, also, I think with especially with regards to that, you know, some of the upheaval that I faced with being vocal about how I feel. Um, I understand that all of us, somewhere along the line, we've, we've experienced what it means to have a lack of fatherly mentorship. And, um, I mean, I lost my father on the 1st of August this year. And the thing that was pretty significant to me about that was just the fact that when you have a father in the house when that space is no longer occupied by that spirit it feels like the roof has been ripped off the house it really feels like everyone is now more exposed and for some reason you don't have the type of safety that you that you had you know just the presence of, of someone being in the house and um that made me think about a whole bunch of things, you know, how we as men suppress so, so many of our experiences as, you know, as infants, as young teenagers, as young men, because our hardship and how we deal with our hardship and what we are able to provide has a direct impact on what type of mate we are able to attract, right? right? So we always have to put ourselves or, or, or appear to be that we are in the best possible position to either offer some form of safety and security for those who we love and those around us, right? Um, and I feel many of us know what it's like to not have that. And the majority of a lot of my school friends growing up came from single parent homes and you know, you, you feel it. And I learned a lot from my friends, so therefore, because I'm 43 years, 43 years old today, this year, and uh, I only experienced what it's like to be a father at this age this year, for me was miraculous. It was just really me trying to express my joy because it was a paradigm shift that I've been hungry for for a very long time. And now to be able to experience that in this capacity, I'm no longer just in the kid capacity. You know, yeah. I was always only someone's child to now be someone's father. It's a great responsibility that I really, really love. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I can see it. Uh, and you know, when you're vulnerable, you give other people a chance to do the same, and there's, there's a lot of power in that. Um, condolences about your dad, but I, I'm wondering where promise then fits in, um, in this continuous journey, right? Which I'm told is a dedication to your wife. I think we played parts yeah. of it as well uh, yes. today. Again, it's you sharing a part of yourself, which many people sometimes keep to, uh, uh, prefer to keep in the shadows? Yes. Well, um, I'm plagued by a couple of things. One thing is when I love something, I usually have the tendency to go down, uh, as deep <laughs> down into that rabbit hole as possible to, yeah. to, dis to discover myself within it, you know. And uh, music is just one of those things. I, I, I express myself differently through it. Um, I think it's something that also helps me just maintain some course within always pursuing my authenticity, you know, in what I'm writing, in what I'm saying, and, and the way that I, you know, creatively package it. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm a guy that's happily married. I have a great wife. I have a great family structure. Um, it's been the most blessed time of my life, really, uh, considering many of the hurdles that I've faced in my life before. So what people are seeing, whether it's the music or the acting, all, all they are seeing is really just me expressing my full gratitude for my life every second, every minute of the day, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, with, with, with music, you know, I also just want to make dope stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hope people dig it. Look, I think you can tick that box. <laughs> it's safe to say we've arrived at that point. I, I'll never be forgiven if I don't ask you what your wife's reaction was to the song. She was just like, am I going to be in the video? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, hey, you're my wife. <laughs> Miss Namibia in my video, I win. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hopefully we have the first sneak peek of that once it's finally out. Tim Frick, yes. it's been wonderful um, in many ways, enlightening, uh, which I think some people will appreciate. So thanks for constantly opening up the many layers 
that make up Clint Brink. Really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Ayanna. There you have it. Singer, songwriter, actor, and a man in love, as they say. Clint Brink joining us for our Friday discussion on the AM Report.